In this lesson, we'll cover some of the basics of sculpting as we begin to work on our T-Rex project. As we open up our T-Rex project file, I just want to emphasize a couple of points for some of our newer users. The first of which is just the fact that I don't want you to get too stressed out or caught up in matching the sculpting or painting that we do on this exactly. We're going to be using this as an example to go through and look at some of the sculpting tools that we have available and then use this to look at some of the newer tools in 2011. So I don't want you to get caught up in trying to make it look exactly like my T-Rex, uh, which leads me into the second point, which is to have a lot of fun. So really make this your own, uh, kind of use those techniques and tools to create your own custom T-Rex that you can, you know, uh, really add your own flair to. Okay, so have a lot of fun with this. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the sculpt tool, the basic sculpt tool. Okay, so we'll go ahead and activate that. And I've got the T-Rex uh, uh, subdivided up to, I think I've got four levels on him. So the first thing we'll look at are the properties that we have over here. And so looking at these, we've got value for size, strength, we've got a mirror option here, and then we've got some options that go down here as we scroll down. So let's look at the main functionality here. As we hover over our model, you can see that we have a center point and a large ring, and this is our brush size. Okay, we can change the size over here with the slider. We can also hold down B and drag to change the size. Okay, we can also see a line, you see that vertical line in the middle? That's gonna be our strength, so we can change that using this. Okay, so if I hit B, you can see that, that strength. I can also modify that strength using the M key. Okay, so using M and dragging, I can pull that strength up and down, so using B, and M can really quickly get the brush size that will work for you. Okay, another aspect of our brush that we need to talk about is the symmetry or the mirror. So right now, if I were to sculpt on this side, nothing would happen on the other side. And that would really make for a lot of work if we were to go in and sculpt this one side and then have to go in and sculpt the other side as well. So what we can do is turn on mirror, and this happens to be in the X, and so now whatever we do on this side, that stroke is mirrored over to the other side. So that can make our lives a little bit easier. We can also choose a fall off from the fall off tray. So for instance, if I choose this fall off, the uh, first fall off, and we can find that down here as well, located here, and we can customize that. But just taking a look at the stroke, if I go ahead and stroke across the model, you can see it's kind of sharp in the middle. You can kind of see that from here. That gives us kind of a sharp effect. Whereas if I select something like this, it gives us much more of a rounded shape. So we can adjust our fall offs as well uh, as we go through and modify our brush strokes. So let's look at how we can start to uh, sculpt up some of this. So we can pull out just by using our sculpt tool. So for instance, if I wanna sculpt out kind of the, the area along the brow, we can start to sculpt that out. And if you start to see some faceting like this, that just means it's a little bit too low res as we're starting to get some of the, uh, some of the kind of detail sculpted in there want to kind of sculpt around the eye a little bit. Now, if I want to smooth this out, I can hold down Shift without changing tools and kind of smooth that back in, okay? If I want to push areas back into the head, okay? So for instance, if I will push this area in, let's go ahead and increase our brush size, decrease our strength. I can hold down Control and that will reverse that. So I can actually push that area in, for instance, around where I want the, uh, the eye to be, okay? And then I can go back in and maybe smooth it out, push it in a little bit more, smooth that out, okay? If we wanna create an area up here on the nose, we can kind of push that in. Up here, using our shift and control, just kind of shift and then go back and get our regular, just a uh, regular sculpt and kind of pull that out, okay? So that we can we can begin sculpting like that. We can start to bring in some of this detail on the eye and kind of the workflow that a lot of people use will be to sculpt at a lower resolution, create any of the shapes that you can, as much detail as you can at that particular resolution before you move up, but people have different ways of working. So just find the best way to work for you, okay? I'm just gonna start to block in some kind of structure, kind of maybe skeletal structure around the, the head. And if you want to take a look at some reference, you can do that. But 
find that it's uh, a little bit more fun if you just kind of have a little bit of fun with it, do your own thing. Kind of come in, okay, we can start to cut this, this in and start to define kind of where we want our eye to be. Okay, so something like that, and just start to continue that around and work everything together. Just continually going back and forth between our sculpt and then smoothing and then also kind of uh, pushing that in instead of pulling it out. Okay, so I can come in here and kind of pull that area out, smooth it back in. Okay, we can start to push some of this geometry in around the mouth if we want to. Just dragging across here to start to uh, start to define that mouth a little bit. Okay, if we want to start to add some musculature, one option that may work well for us would be the bulge tool. Okay, if we take a look at this, this is actually going to kind of inflate the area out. Okay, along its own normal. So. Um, if you have pieces that are right next to each other, this will become apparent. They can kind of start to overlap, but this would be good for uh, adding our muscles in here along the legs if we want to start to build in a musculature. We'll maybe get a kind of a larger brush size here. Okay, and I'll just start to drag this up. Okay, and just maybe make maybe a couple lines here for our muscles along the legs. Maybe going up and showing this kind of bone up here. Okay, maybe this, this one kind of comes off to the back here. And just getting those kind of large shapes built in here. Okay, you can do the same thing up here on the uh, front arms. Okay, if we want to add some musculature up here, just kind of using that bulge to build that in. Okay, same thing on the neck. We'll get that those muscles built in. We'll just kind of sculpt those down from the base of the head. Okay, so just start to use that to come in and do that. Now, if we want to modify the shape as far as, you know, larger scale shapes, we can go ahead and use the grab tool. A grab will allow us to click on part of a model and then actually pull it up. So we're not actually stroking across the model, we're actually clicking and dragging. So for instance, if I want to pull this brow out, I can do that. If I want to take this part of the head and kind of pull it out, I can do that too. Do any sort of uh, shaping that I want to here. And a lot of times this will work well on lower uh, resolutions or lower subdivision levels. But we can do it here at a, our level that we're working at right now as well. Okay, so any kind of changes to the shape that you want to make, you can do that there. All right. Another option that we can use is the knife. And that will be good for adding things like uh, wrinkles. And this has a built in stamp. If we take a look over here, it's actually using a stamp image. So if we take a look at this, let's go ahead and dial our brush size down. It's actually cutting in. And this We may be able to view this a little bit better if we go ahead and subdivide one more time. So we'll go ahead and subdivide our geometry once again. Okay. And now you can see that we're actually creating these sort of wrinkles and cuts into the surface. And this is good for uh, defining some of these different areas. Maybe we want to use it to just define our musculature a little bit more. Okay, you can use it to define uh, wrinkles, for instance, along the tail. If we want to go ahead and start to build in some wrinkles, we can just kind of drag those across. Okay, if we want to get a nice straight line, if we don't want to have it all curved like that, we can also use our steady stroke, which will just give us a nice straight stroke. In this case, it may not be what we want, but there may be instances where we want to have kind of a little bit more control over the curve uh, that we can use. So we can use steady stroke for that. We also have the stamp spacing, which we'll look at in a second, just kind of how far apart the how far apart rather those stamps are spaced. Let's go ahead and start to define some of the areas up here. We can do that with our knife a little bit more. We can also use it here on our mouth to kind of cut that area in a little bit just to give us a little bit more definition on that mouth. Okay, so as we come in, you can see how it creates a little bit more of that sharp look there. Okay, now rather than pulling uh, detail up, we can also add material, and we can do that using wax. So what this will do, if we go in here, for instance, along the mouth, and let me go ahead and get brush size down. change our fall off a little bit. And so you can see, we can start to add material to this. So it's a little bit of a different effect than we would get with our sculpt. 
we can start to add material in here on top of this. And this is often a good way to start to block in uh, block in detail on top of things. So it's a little bit more akin maybe to some uh, traditional methods. We're going in and just layering uh, material on top of this sculpt. So coming in here, maybe defining where we want this structure to be. Coming down here, we can still go in and with shift, kind of smooth that out uh, if we want to. You can see how we get a little bit of a, an edge on our stroke when we do it this way. But we can go in and just smooth that out. Okay, let's use our sculpt. We can go back and forth here. We'll kind of pull that in a little bit. Okay, kind of sculpt a structure for the eye here. Okay, and if we want to kind of move this down a little, we can do that. Get a little bit of a bigger area down underneath the eye, kind of smooth that out a little. Okay, we can use our bulge to go in and bring our eye out a little bit. So I'll just bulge that eye up smooth it out a little. Okay, you can see how that's starting to overlap a little bit. So we can always go back and just kind of smooth that out. And some overlap may be okay if we're working with something like the eye. Okay, and you can see how that's a little bit misshapen. So we can go ahead and just kind of smooth that back out a little bit. Okay. And then if you want to start to add a little bit more detail down here, go in with your knife and define that a little bit more. You can do that as well. Okay, and now here up at this upper level, we can start to get a little bit more detail in here. Now if we want to start to add add uh, you know skin detail on this, and that would be something we would add after we got all of the structure added, um, we could also use stamps and stencils. So we could come in here, for instance, uh, grab one of these stamps, so let's say this particular stamp, okay? And so now when we come in, let's go ahead and open that up. If we drag across this, you can see that our stroke is now using this stamp, just like that. Now if we want to randomize our stamp, we can choose random and that will randomize it using the different values here, rotation, movement, and you can see how that gives us a more random effect. And if we want to actually space it out a little bit more, we'll change our stamp spacing. So you can see how that spaces those out a bit more. Go ahead and increase that. So you can see how those aren't even touching anymore. So just depend on, depending on the effect that you want to get, um, we can grab maybe a different stamp and just maybe start to add a little bit of roughness to the skin. Okay, so we can do that as well. We can also go in and use a stencil, so to turn our stamp off, we can use a, a stencil to come in and let's go ahead and grab maybe some of this uh, skin here. And so just for instance, here on, along the uh, leg, uh, to move the stencil around, we just hold down S, uh, drag to rotate it, little mouse to go in and out, and our right mouse, actually our right mouse to go in and out, middle mouse to move it around, get it into position, and then we can actually paint through this. So as we sculpt, it's actually sculpting through that image and it disappears, you can see there, but we can actually sculpt through that to get a little bit of detail. Okay, to turn that stencil off, we just turn it off. We can also maybe sculpt through a little bit of a division here, dividing line along the belly, and then let's use our our uh, fall off to create some of these wrinkles down here. So as our skin comes down along here, we can kind of start to add some of these uh, some of these wrinkles. Okay, if we get some of those dots, we can play with our stamp spacing a little bit more, making sure that it's not too far apart there. Okay, and you can alternate between pushing in and pulling out to get that sort of wrinkled effect on the bottom. All right, so there are a number of different effects that you can get using a number of different sculpt tools here. So just go through, have a little fun, build out some of the musculature of this, use the knife to kind of bring in some wrinkling and define some of these areas a little bit more, uh, refine the head a little bit. You can also come in if you use the pinch 
if you've got some areas you want to tighten up you can pinch those and that'll kind of tighten those areas up a little bit okay going in and then maybe using wax to come in and add some additional detail up here and as I said it's not really important that yours look just the same we'll go ahead and uh, sculpt up a finished T-Rex here with all of the a lot of the detail in it and then in the next lesson we'll look at using sculpt layers to uh, really customize our workflow so we'll look at that next